Hi everyone. Today we're going to learn about three things that are absolutely critical ideas for this course. Those three things are codes, ciphers, and algorithms. So let's look at the definitions of these three things. A code is just a way of recording information to be transmitted. It's not necessarily designed to keep the information secret. It's just a way of recording what you want to communicate. Whereas a cipher is a code that is intentionally designed to keep certain people from reading it. This diagram reminds us that every cipher is a type of code, but not vice versa. Again, a code is just a way of communicating. Ciphers are what we might think of as secret codes. And this terminology is, is used by cryptographers a little bit differently than the general public. A lot of times people think that all codes are intended to be secret. So I really wanna emphasize that there is a difference. All ciphers are types of codes, but not vice versa. Difference is secrecy. Once you start looking for them, codes are everywhere. Even just on this box of baby food, we see barcodes, product codes, the whole box overflows with information. An algorithm is a clear step-by-step -step process that will always produce a specific result as long as, as it is followed correctly. And everything you see on this box, the numbers, the letters, the symbols, is intended to convey some piece of information to an intended recipient. It might be to a person, it might be to a machine, like a scanner or an inventory tracker. This means that someone had to come up with the rules for what these symbols would mean. And those rules of what the symbols mean is called a code. And they also had to come up with the process of converting the information into the final form. And that step-by-step -step process of doing the conversion is called an algorithm. Once you learn to think about codes and algorithms in this way, you realize that they are everywhere. People often think of codes and algorithms as being associated with computers, but they're not just for computers. It's true that computers use codes to store information, and they use algorithms to process information. But there are examples of algorithms in our everyday lives. So first, let's look at this bag of mozzarella cheese. Are there any codes on this bag? And you probably noticed the UPC code and also the nutrition facts can be interpreted as some type of code. Now the question, another question is, do you see any algorithms? Well, this recipe for Italian style pepperoni wrap is an algorithm. If you perform these instructions step by step, you should end up with an Italian style pepperoni wrap. Four servings. There's an algorithm on the back of this cereal box. A clear three-step process that anyone can follow to get a 30-day subscription trial to Disney Plus. Anyone can do this and it's a clear step-by-step -step process. On the other hand, this diagram for how to tie a tie, I don't think this is a good algorithm. It's not explicitly clear how to get from one step to the next. So it could be a matter of interpretation whether or not an algorithm is clear or not. A good question to ask is, could I read these instructions to someone I don't know very well over the phone and be sure that they could perform those steps to get the result that I want? Suppose you build a robot and you want to have it make toast. You give it an algorithm. Get some bread, put the bread in the toaster, turn the toaster on, and take the bread out. This might seem like a reasonable algorithm, but look at it carefully. Remember that the robot cannot interpret anything that it is told. Think about how you would rate this algorithm. So I'd like to ask you to pause the video for a few minutes, read the algorithm carefully, and see if you notice any issues. How would you rate this algorithm? Please pause and read. This algorithm has a number of issues. First of all, the phrase some bread is extremely ambiguous. And because of that lack of clarity, Automatically, this is not a good algorithm. For instance, you did not say which kind of bread. If they bring back bread that doesn't fit in the toaster, your problem. Also, where should they get the bread? How much bread should they get? If they go to California to get bread, or if they try to put a hundred pieces of bread, 
Nowhere does it say to remove the bread from the wrapper or bag. If you don't tell the robot to do that, it probably won't. Finally, you take the bread out, but nowhere does it say to turn the toaster off. You might say these are common sense things, but algorithms are meant to be followed completely literally. The entire point is that we do them exactly as they're written. So you have to be very careful when you're specifying the instructions to algorithms and be sure that they say exactly what you mean.